Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd come out and um, mainly test this new camera that I'm using. Um, it's quite windy out here in Toowoomba today and um, what a better way to try and test out this microphone and stuff. So, in today's video I would like to talk about why Medina Bike Park is as good as it is. Um, I'm actually on the edge of the Jubilee Escarpment almost here. Have a look at this. Damn. <laughs> that is actually a uh, sick view. But um, yeah, it's actually freezing out here in Toowoomba today. It's like 7 degrees and 20 to 30 kilometer winds, which is pretty cooked to be honest. I'm going to turn off this face tracking real quick. Okay, that might be a lot better. Yeah, anyways, um, made in a bike park. Let's, let's uh, have a yarn about it. I'm going to get back in my car where it's warm and then we'll have a good talk about it. Yo. So, yes, made in a bike park. I've been there once, but we rode for two days and um, yeah, I'm going to try and split this video up into like two sections, I guess you could say. Essentially, we'll start with like... Um, you know, the restaurants, the amenities, all that type of stuff at Medina Bike Park. And then we'll talk about the trails and um, everything like that that comes with the trails, like progression, uh, features, jumps, whatever. So the amenities at Medina Bike Park are pretty for surreal. Like they have a full restaurant there. Essentially, the whole place is almost built out of that little restaurant. So Medina's roughly an hour from Hobart, hour and a half or something like that from Hobart. Uh, west, I believe, yeah, west, and um, it is literally a tiny town with probably 200 people that live there, maybe, if that, like, I couldn't imagine there'd be more, pretty much every house there is an Airbnb, and um, there isn't, I think there's a local shop, not that we checked it out, I'm not sure if it was still open, there was mixed messages about the shop there, but um, yeah, there is just one restaurant there, which is the Bike Parks restaurant, <laughs> and I think that there is actually a little cafe there as well, so you can also get coffees from the cafe or the Bike Park, either way, you can get a coffee there, no worries. Um, if you are heading there though, for more than one day, you can stop at the Woolies, which is about half an hour um, from Medina on the way there, and um, get all your supplies and stuff, I can't remember the name of that place, but you'll, it's a mini town before you get to Medina, but yeah, Medina is basically just a bike park, so um, yeah, essentially all the uh, all your bike park needs are obviously in the bike park, you can hire a bike there, you can um, wash your bikes and clean your bikes there, you can gather lunch and dinner, they also do breakfast too actually, um, coffees like I said, you can get gear there, there's a full bike shop there, um, all the bike parts that you'll need to keep you going, of course, tubes, rims, tires, everything they have there normally in stock I, i'm guessing they stock stuff so if you have any issues they do have that type of stuff in stock so yeah yeah the shop sells clothing pads um shoes uh gloves helmets they sell everything in the it's just a bike shop obviously with a bike mechanic store and a dedicated mechanic shout out brendo and maybe there is more mechanics there sorry i only know brendo though obviously perksy he's from where i live <laughs> um what else is in the bike park yeah, obviously shuttles. Um, shuttles are very important. Obviously nowhere in Australia, well, sorry, Threadbow has a uh, chairlift in Australia, but nowhere else in Australia um, has a chairlift, and I don't think Medina will probably ever get one. I think they cost quite a lot of money to run, but it might be something they might be looking at. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so Medina shuttles, they are pretty much... Well, they're really well priced. Um, I'm not going to say the price because it might change between now and next season. So, um, but when we went there, and when for the last five six years, they look very very fairly priced for what you get out of it. Um, completely fair. I'd happily pay that every day to ride there. Um, well, not that I could afford that, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It is it is well priced for what you get. The shuttles are really nice buses as well, and you can also get a. The buggies, which are like can m like five seat, six seat buggies, and they can take you up to a certain point on the uh, hill. We didn't do that though, so I'm not sure what that experience is like, but it looked good. Um, I've seen some people doing it, and you can buy like literal lift passes, as in like um, you could buy like five passes and go up five times, etc. But if you do just book the whole day, um, you can just go up in the buses all day. So shuttle drop off points, there is two. Um, there is Midline, which is halfway up the hill, almost. Essentially, you're going to miss out on 
probably like four to 500 meters of elevation drop, which is quite a lot, obviously. And then midline, you do have to pedal across across the midline uh, fire road trail, which is actually a really cool trail. It's, it's a very green and very nice. So you do have to cross across there to get to the actual trail hubs across that part of the mountain. Like it's, it's like halfway down. So yeah, um, midline is a good drop off though for the start of the day and all, there is a lot of good trails that do start there. So it's a great warm up stuff like that. I would recommend doing a midline run as your first lap at Medina. Um, the second drop off is the very peak, which is 1200 meters of, um, vertical elevation from the top to the bottom of the park. Um, I think the hill does stand a lot taller than that, but that is the elevation, close to the elevation from top to bottom. And essentially, um, it is very cold up there, very windy. Uh, well, at least when we went anyway, maybe it'll be a little bit warmer um, other, other times of the year, but January, the guys were still saying it was quite cold. Um, but yeah, you do get plenty of time to warm up your hands as you're riding down anyway. <laughs> so yeah, there are your two shuttle drop-off points. Um... I can't think of any any other real amenities or anything like that. There is maps everywhere. There is trail science everywhere, which we'll get into in a sec. So, um, Medina for families would be great. Um, there is lots of trails there that you can get down. The, the top, the very peak um, Skyline Trail might be a bit more technical for younger riders or newer greenish riders. So, maybe a midline midline riding might be the go for families with young kids or you know very green riders um because that trail is blue and i can think of like some pretty you know it is it is a higher blue but it's not it's kind of like it's not it's not a hard trail it's just you do have to be a little bit experienced to ride it um and then you do get into two other blue trails which are quite techy they're full of rocks and they're they are quite techy to be honest so Family, family, bringing a family here though would be absolutely sick, especially if you've got um, kids that are a bit more experienced, but green, you know, green trail riders can still get down from midline beyond. There's all green trails from midline and they're all quite easy. So a little bit steep, but they're, they're all pretty good. Um, from what we rode anyway, we pretty much rode majority of the trails. So yeah. Um, but really, realistically, you're going to get the most out of this place if you're a gravity rider. If you're a downhill rider, enduro rider um obviously everyone will have fun here but if you're a more experienced rider you will make the most of medina because most of the trails are quite um steep so <laughs> on videos you cannot tell how steep it is um obviously as this video is rolling through i'm going to show show footage of trails and different stuff like that but um yeah the trails there are quite steep even the greens and stuff like that if you're let's say you're from brisbane and you're used to riding daisy hill obviously there's no steep trails at daisy hill um maybe nirvana has like a few steepish bits but um even mount cotton there is no steep trails there compared to what you'll find at medina even on the greens. so the greens are more like blues in a sense if you're coming from brisbane like i just said a blue would probably be a black in brisbane all right maybe even further than that because they are quite they're not, like I said, they're not hard, hard, but they they do require some skill of steep, steep, you know, brake control, stuff like that. They are quite techy in my view. Like there was a few trails there where I thought this blue should be a black and it would 100% be a black back home. Even in Toowoomba, it would definitely be a black. But um, that is just how bike parks are. Um... So yeah, let's uh, get into the actual trails. Like I just said, greens are probably more blues. Blues are very close to blacks, and blacks are definitely double blacks if you're considering what you would normally ride. Now, I've ridden majority of the east coast of Australia. I've ridden in Victoria at Mount Buller. I've ridden Threadbow, um, Stromlo, everywhere in Brisbane and southeast Queensland, all of that. Fair bit of Sydney and a lot of north queensland i haven't ridden oh and obviously rode blue derby which is northern tassie and um that's about that's about like the major spots and everywhere in between you know whatever <laughs> um and i'd say the medina trails are rated lower than what ever else is like there was nothing too serious at threadbow that i can think of stromlo had a few gnarly bits but yeah so the 
the blacks are probably double blacks at your local public place. They are quite gnarly. And that's mainly just because of how steep it is. Like I'm telling you, it is actually very steep when you ride there. So if if you're doing a full run from top to bottom, I'd suggest starting on the um, the blues and taking the greens and blues down and maybe looking for more of the flow style trails. So um, getting into that, every single trail sign at the start of every trail, every single trail has a trail sign at the beginning. It'll have your rating and it'll also have let's say it's a blue so it should be a blue square if it's a flow trail it'll be like a wave if it's half flow half tech it'll be a wave and then some jagged points if it's all tech it'll just be jagged points etc like that if it is a black similar thing it'll just be a diamond and with some jagged bits for a tech trail or if it's half half it'll be half half so very very well done I've not seen that before, or I've not noticed it before, I should say. Maybe I have seen it before. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll have to go back and see if that's the case at other parks, but I don't think it is. Um, so, yeah, every trail is rated very, very well, and every trail is built very, very well. So, I'd, so pretty much if you go to the very peak of shuttle drop-off, you will ride Skyline every single time, and you'll learn to love that trail. It is a great trail. It is very tough on the hands, sort of. But um, after you've picked some lines and you've ridden a few times, it's quite good. Normally that part of the, the hill is quite wet as well. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. The trails at Medina are generally always wet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping next time I go there, they're dry. But then apparently it's very dusty when they're dry. And I don't know if that's better or worse. But <laughs> I guess we'll find out when we do go back there. Um... So yeah, you'll ride Skyline every single time if you go to the very peak, and then you'll come down into Tea Trees or Pandani. Tea Trees is extremely rocky and very tough on the hands, and Pandani is um, kind of much the same, but not as bad. So then you'll split off into two sections of the park. You've got the left side and the right side. Um, yep, that's right. <laughs> and then you've got trails that branch off from there. So essentially you'll come down one part of the hill, you'll hit a junction, and then you've got two junctions, depending on which trail you picked beforehand. And then it'll pretty much roll on again. You'll go down to another junction, and then that'll be like another stop point. And then there's another junction, which will be another stop point. So it's very easy to navigate Medina. To be honest, you can't really screw it up, because you've got junctions at each spot. And if you ever feel like you're confused about where you are, then obviously you just jump on trail forks. Or um, if, you, if you get a map from the kiosk, you can use the map. I'm pretty sure they got maps there. <laughs> Anyways, very simple. Um, now they've also got flow and tech trails. A lot of the trails there are tech trails. However, if you are into jumps, they have a very, very well done progressive jump um, system. So I don't know if it's written down anywhere, but I think the best way to do it would be if you want to do some jumps and you want to learn to do the bigger jumps, I think you'd start on Supercross, which is more of a tabletop flow jump line sort of thing it's not there's no gap jumps i don't believe it was all just tabletops and they were all pretty chill and then you'd essentially move on to the local which is another jump line but you have a and b options these are both black trails and the a lines are sort of more gappy but they're still like tabletop style landings with very easy landings so you know, you kind of like tick it off, right? You tick off Supercross and then you tick off the local. Once you get pretty good at the local, then I'd guess you'd try and move on to um, Dirt Church, which is a double black and it is gap jumps. So do keep that in mind. But obviously every single trail has signs that says gap jump or not gap jumps, everything like that, all right? So it is very easy not to um, get screwed over that way. But yeah, you just start on these trails, go through, Dirt Church, once you do Dirt Church, and you complete all of Dirt Church, they're very big, by the way, <laughs> and quite steep. But, um, yeah, the lead-up to them's like, real good. The jumps are really well done. And um, you'd move forward from that, and maybe you do Showtime at the end. But, uh, yeah, very well done. Um, the steep tech trails, the blue ones are pretty gnarly as well, so keep in mind that these aren't trails like you ride at home. They are quite steep. But like I was saying earlier, a more gravity style rider will get the best out of Medina. If you, if you can jump stuff real well, you're gonna you're gonna have a great time here. Like it's not just tech trails. There are so many good jump trails, and if you're a tech trail rider, then you're gonna absolutely froth this place. Um, I was always more of a jump person. 
Lately, I've been riding a lot more steep stuff, and since going to Medina, I really, really love and enjoy steep trails now that I'm starting to get better at them. And I think most people will as well. Um, hmm. Keep in mind that obviously Medina is quite wet for most of the year, so you probably won't get a good dry run there. I'm not sure when the dry period is, but if there is one. So yeah, it'll be majority wet. Um, once getting down to the bottom of the hill, you've got a trail that you finish on. There is actually two. Sorry, there's two. There's a green one and a black one. The green one, I can't remember its name. It's just a flowy finishing trail but the black one is called showtime and this is where the container jump is at the bottom you've got gap jumps on the left i'm pretty sure the whole way and big tabletops on the right and you can roll all of these on the right side no worries it is a black black trail but it is all rollable jumps and that container jump is pretty gnarly if you've never tried something like that before it's not too bad though if you can jump you're fine <laughs> um so yeah you'll finish on that trail every run and i did not get bored of Showtime. It was so good, so fast, and yeah, really, really good. Sorry, I'm jumping around on this video a bit, but um, yeah, trying to explain everything, or explain some things. But comfortably, this would be the best bike park in Australia by far. Um, Blue Derby is really good. I'll make another video on Blue Derby to explain why it... They're different parks, okay? Blue Derby's family-orientated, very... Uh, not as steep it's very chill mostly the black trails are pretty gnarly but you know it's it's way different than medina which is awesome that they have medina blue derby completely different places completely different riding but so damn good but look medina is comfortably the best bike park in australia they have really really good jump lines their jumps are built very very well i'm pretty sure dirt art has done everything and they are really good. <laughs> They're really good at jump, jump trails. I thought they were great. Um, the tech trails are unmatched. I've never ridden anything like those before, other than my local pirate trails. <laughs> but um, yeah, the tech trails are very, very well done, just like the jump trails. And there is something there for everyone. You will come back from Adina as a better rider. I 100% guarantee it if you don't crash on the first run. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah obviously take it easy first runs um yeah comfortably <laughs> but yeah obviously take it easy first runs um yeah comfortably made in a bike park easily the best bike park in australia it's not getting past anytime soon i don't think so all these other bike parks that are built being built probably awesome i'm keen to get to some of them down at um eden and uh wherever else but uh yeah yeah, made in a bike park. If you're if you're planning a new trip to ride somewhere new, just just go to Tasmania. Like, don't waste your time going to Threadbow. Um, don't waste your time going anywhere else. Just spend the money and go to Medina. It is not that much more expensive than going anywhere else in Australia. Honestly, it costs like the same. Um, so yeah. Definitely would recommend Medina. Hopefully I've gone over a fair bit in this video. I haven't talked about any of the actual trails. But um, you can watch my videos. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to check out some of the trails because I've got full runs of pretty much all of them. So, yeah. Anyways, um, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite bike park is in Australia. And, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Hit me up. Um, anyways, cheers. Legends. Peace.